Now we would like to start the press conference announcing the, 30, the 2018 Kyoto Prize laureates. Let us introduce first in front, on the left, Chair of Kyoto Prize Executive Committee, Dr. Hiroyuki Sakaki, President of Toyota Technical Institute. And for the Chair of Kyoto Prize Committee of Advanced Technology, Dr. Mitsuo Kawato, Director of Brain Information Communication Research Laboratory Group of Advanced Telecommunication Research Institute International. And the Chair for the Basic Science, Dr. Mori Shigehumi, Director General and Distinguished Professor of Institute for Advanced Study of Kyoto University. And for the Kyoto Prize Committee Chair of Arts and Philosophy, Professor Kashiwagi Hiroshi, Professor Emeritus, Musashino Art University. First, we would like to ask Dr. Sakaki, Chair of the Kyoto Prize Executive Committee, we would like to ask Doctor to announce the three laureates. And following to that, we would like to have explanation on the achievement of each laureate. We would have time for question and answers after all the explanations. Then, Dr. Sakaki, please. Then, let me announce the laureates. The laureates of the 2018 Kyoto Prize for Advanced Technology. This year's prize field is biotechnology and medical technology. We have selected Dr. Carl Dyseroth from United States, age 46, neuroscientist, professor at Stanford University, and also investigator at Howard Hughes Medical Institute. Achievement is discovery of optogenetics and development of causal systems neuroscience. And following for the basic science, this year's prize field is mathematical science, including pure mathematics. The laureate is Dr. Masaki Kashiwara from Japan, age is 71 and a mathematician and project professor at the Research Institute for Mathematical Science at Kyoto University. Achievement is outstanding contributions to a broad spectrum of modern mathematics advancement of d module theory from its foundation. And for the arts and philosophy, this year's prize field is arts. Painting, sculpture, craft, architecture, photography, design, and, and etc. And Ms. Joan Jonas from the United States has been selected. Age is 81, and she's an artist. And also Professor Emerita at Massachusetts Institute of Technology. The achievement is an artist who pioneered a new artistic expression by integrating performance art and new media, remaining at the forefront of contemporary art for 50 years. The three are the laureates for the Kyoto Prize for this year. All three are, even today, very active in their own fields. When we had made the selection, this is again for same for every year, we had so many nominates from around the world where they are very excellent, so it is very difficult to make the selection, and probably you already know, but we have to go through three stages for the selection, and so we had made the decision from the various points of view, especially this year, we are having the youngest laureate, who is Dr. Dyserov, and this was very impressive for me this year. This is the 34th time that we're having this Kyoto Prize, and I'm very pleased to say, as a chairperson of the Kyoto Prize Executive Committee, that prominent laureates had been selected who deserves the international award. Thank you very much, Dr. Sasakaki. And today, we are pleased to have the laureate of the Advanced Technology, Dr. Kashiwara, to come to this floor. So we also have set a time for the doctor to answer the questions from the press. 
Then let us move on to the explanation of the achievements of each laureate. And first, for Dr. Carl Dyserov, Dr. Kawato will give the explanation. Please refer to the page one to three and also the supporting materials. And also please look at the monitor screen in the front. Then uh, Professor Kawato, please. Now, Kawato speaking, let me introduce the achievement of the Dr. Dyseros, discovery of optogenetics and development of causal system neuroscience is the contribution. Yes. This is the picture of mouse into the brain of mouse. Light is emitted to control the behavior. Let me explain the optogenetics. Using the gene of light-activated proteins, we can operate the activity of the nerve cells with light. In the light-activated proteins, there are several kinds of microbiotics or the wavelength and functions. As you can see, this is Volvox in the middle, Chlamydomonas. On the right, that's the RK bacteria, halo bacteria, respectively. In response to the light, channel can open or pump operates. By so doing, into the cell, positive ion can flow in, or negative ion can flow into the cells to change the level of the potential of electric activity in the cells. By utilizing this method of mechanism, light-activated proteins can be expressed in the brain cells of the mammals or primates by emitting the light. We can control or maneuver the behavior. In the optogenetics, as I may said, Cladomonas or the channel rhodopsin code can be inserted into the nerve cells to be expressed. And then in the membrane, channel rhodopsin proteins can be embedded by emitting light. Cells can be excited. This method has high time resolution. This shows the morphology of one type of neuron. You might not be see this arrow that is a pulse on the millisecond basis with the time precision. If we emit the light and then 100 millivolt, that's the peak, the spike of the red line, that's the active potential for excitation. That's the basic mechanism for the brain function in a brain. This shows you the living animal. Light-activated proteins were embedded into the motor region on the unilateral side only. With the channel rhodopsin, with the light on, the mouse will move, rotating counterclockwise. However, if it's not expressed on the right-hand side, it doesn't move. That is shown in this movie. Now light is on, and then the, on the left, the mouse is running around counterclockwise because light regulates the behavior because of the interference into the brain cells. That was for the activation side for the nerve cells using the channel rhodopsin. However, silencing can be also done. That is the inhibition. This shows the active potential. Electricity is given from outside. Excitation was artificially made with the external electricity through the electrode. And it, again, this is the silencing channel 
halorodopsin, then halorodopsin can suppress those excitation. Therefore, into the specific nerve cells, light activated proteins can be inserted, and by expressing those, pathway for the neuron circuits can be controlled by this method. Therefore, function and the neuronal circuits can be analyzed into the causal systems. We did have the research advancement, however, mainly we tried to research the co-relationship. We did have the control of the activity of the brain, however, time scale was not enough, especially it was difficult to focus on the cell type specific approach, therefore, revolutionary method was invented. If it can be combined with the genetic engineering, high level of the experiments can be done. Dr. Inokuchi et al. made these experiments at Toyama University. Inside a brain, one event called A and the memory of fear, B, were related, and those neurons were marked. And then with the optogenetics, simultaneously, it's associated artificially. That is called associated memory. A corresponds to B. That means that even though it was not the context with fear, but still, the mouth can feel fear. Artificially, memory can be regulated in modern days. This is the last slide. Dr. Dyseros has discovered the channel rhodopsin and halorhodopsin, which are light activated proteins. He developed one after another for the neuroscience. He offered the new tools, but not only for that, he was so generous and kind enough to widely offer for the other researchers in neuroscience. Therefore, we made a shift from the correlation focused research into the causal systems. Big change has been made that was triggered by the young Dr. Dyseros. Great achievement was given by Dr. Dyseros for the research. Therefore, Dr. Dyseros is the winner for the Kyoto Prize this year. Thank you very much. Thank you, Dr. Kawato. Next, the laureate of basic sciences, Dr. Masaki Kashiwara's achievement is going to be planned by Professor Mori from page four to six and the supplementary materials requested to be referred. Now, Chairman Mori, please. Thank you. Now, let me introduce to you the achievements of Dr. Masaki Kashiwara. Algebraic analysis is the field which is crossover based on the modern algebraic methodology with the object of analysis using the differential equations. In the initial research, Dr. encountered Dr. Mikio Sato and Dr. Takahiro Kawai collaboratively using the algebraic geometry they made a successful handling in the differentiation equations. And he completed the categorization theory for the linear partial differentiation equations. And the module is closely related with other mathematical fields, and that is located in central place. When we review the history of mathematics, unknown things can be named to be the variable and four arithmetic operations were maneuvered with a set of rule and algebra started. Likewise, operation of the differentiation was regarded as the new variable and the module research had started. D of the D module is the D of the differential operator. As shown on the left, that is the differential equations. However, not like that on the right, that's the equation of the D modules. So that's the one 
that Dr. Kashiwara approached. Likewise, linear differential equation systems can be captured as the D modules for the research. Dr. Kashiwara independently established the basic theory for the D modules, and many fundamental theorems were proved to make a foundation for the research into the future. Some of them are listed on lower right, which I will mention later. Remarkable achievement of Doctor is the composition of the Riemann Hilbert correspondence. If we solve the linear differential equations, solutions are usually multi valued functions. Let me explain it. It's not a differential equation. However, y squared equal to x, and then we have two solutions, y equal plus or minus root x. If x is the real variable, y equal plus or minus root x, and that can be easily differentiated. Different graph can be drawn. However, in the case of a complex variable, one solution, for example, y equal plus root x, that can go around a path encircling x equal to zero. Sorry, I am trying to explain on 3D. Please imagine in your brain. And then, in the case of x equal to zero, that is substituted with the other solution, that's y equal to minus root x. It's very hard to understand by just having the imagination. That is the multi-valued function. This switch phenomena is called, as a whole, monodromy group. That's on the left, on the slide. Likewise, from the solution of the linear differentiation equations, we can define a monodromy group. Y equal to plus or minus root x is one of the solution for the differential equations. However, what would happen to the other way around? That means the differential equation, which has the given monodromy, can always exist. That is called Riemann-Hilbert problem. In the case of first degree, that was solved affirmatively. The case of higher dimensions had been a long-standing issue to which Dr. Kashiwara provided an ideal answer in the form of a one-to-one -one correspondence between regular holonomic D modules and constructible sheaves. This is a beautiful synthesis of geometry, algebra, and analysis, and its influence extends beyond the respective fields. Dr. Kashiwara and his collaborator solved the kazdan lustig conjecture as an important application of the Riemann-Hilbert correspondence to representation theory. Theory of crystal bases quantum groups is another important achievement of Dr. Kashiwara in representation theory. Quantum groups are a deformation of the algebra as shown on this slide. In the mathematical physics, that is a very important object for describing the symmetry. Physically speaking, that has a parameter Q in response to the deformation for the temperature. Dr. Kashimura found that the significant simplification occurs in the limit where Q becomes zero and introduced crystal bases at Q equal to zero, which have become a powerful tool in representation theory and combinatorics. Achievements by Dr. Kashiwara are many in addition to that, including a lot of collaborative researches. One example is the micro-local analysis of the sheaves. And also, he proved that Riemann-Hilbert correspondence for holonomic D modules, including regular singularities, and also he is successful for categorification of quantum groups. Category means the interrelated relationship, not only just looking at the discrete objects. That's a very important method for the modern mathematics. 
Li Mojo theory is permeating into the other fields for the number theory as well, making the mainstream in the modern mathematics. His unique research will continue to have the deep influence for the development of the mathematics. Thank you very much, Chairman Mori. Now, following, we would like to have Professor Kashiwagi to explain about the achievement of uh, John Jonas, Ms. John Jonas, who is a laureate for the philosophy and art. Please look at page 78 and the supporting materials. Then, Professor Kashiwagi, please. Now, let me explain about John Jonas. As already has been explained, the title is An Artist Who Pioneered New Artistic Expression by Integrating Performance Art and New Media, Remaining at the Forefront of Contemporary Art for 50 Years. Ms. Jonas was born in July 13, 1936 in New York, United States, and currently she is 81 years old. Currently, at the Tate Modern Museum in England, there is a big retrospective exhibition held for Ms. Jonas, and she just shown a performance, so she is very actively acting as an artist today. After studying art history at Mount Holyoke College, she studied sculpture at the uh, School of Music and Fine Arts in Boston and Columbia University and received the MFA at Columbia University. First, she has been working for sculpture, but at the late 1960s in New York downtown's art scene, she has encountered various artists, then has a lot of influence from these encounters, and she started working in performance, a new form of visual art. Ms. Jonas tried to look for a new way of expression, not only for sculptures, but putting together drawings and sounds and body expressions. So performance art was the ideal answer to her pursue. The artists that she had interactions those days were, for example, Robert Rauschenberg, Claes Oldenburg, Tricia Brown, John Cage, and Philip Glass, and Steve Reich. So these were the artists. And those, especially when she participated in a workshop, which was done by Tricia Brown or Lucinda Charles, who later became mythic figures in the postmodern dance, uh, this led to her creating her own style of work which emphasizes on body expression in the middle of 1960 a very important hardware in the video art history has been made by Sony this was the first home used videotape recorders and portable video cameras and this set was called with a name of Porta Pack when Miss Jonas came to Japan in 1970s she purchased this Porta Pack so starting from there in the 1970s Ms. Jonas had created a new way of expression where she put performance and videos together. The first work that she brought in uh, video in the performance was the 1972's Organic Honey's Visuals Telepathy, and following to that, again in 1972, the vertical row, which is a work that is becoming the archetype in the history of video art, and has a high reputation and has been referred to or studied by various artists of subsequent generations. This, in this work, the performance on the stage are filmed in the video and also in the real time, they are shown in the TV monitors on the screen. And so the mixture of live performance and the video and also there is a discrepancy between the audience view and also by the camera's angles and also by the delay of electronic system. Uh, electrical system had created a revolutionary structure. And after this, Ms. Jonas has been creating works of a labyrinth-like style of work, which put together lots of elements like videos and body expressions, drawings and poets and music. And for example, one of her masterpieces of 2000s was reanimation, where she put together the Iceland's natures and the myth mythology and the drawings and the sounds and her past images. They are being added on the multi-layered way. These arts of Ms. Jonas does not ask for single prepared interpretation to the audience. Rather, 
She asked the audience to create our own way of interpreting, including the misinterpretations and which has a very contemporary narrative structure. The multi-layer nature of her work uh, come from inspiration she found in the brain's functions of perceiving various things at once. She says that she is expressing in her work the way we look at the world. The works of Ms. Jonas, who is multi-layered, uh, is based on the happening, which she had uh, lots of encounters in the 1960s avant-garde artist. And happening is an part uh, art that shatters the artistic conventions and the timely orders, and is putting emphasis on contingency and unscripted spontaneous expression. So her works put emphasis on the process, on how the works are made, and also has a non-linear structure that do not have a story where many elements are intertwined together. Through the creation of her works, Ms. Jonas has developed the greatest legacy of the 1960s avant-garde art into the framework of postmodern art, which is additive and has diverse sense of value and has handed down to the following generations. Also, Ms. Jonas is a professor emerita at the Massachusetts Institute of Technology, and she has uh, gaining high respect as an educator of high personality and also he's given tremendous influence to the following generations. So that concludes my explanation about Ms. John Jonas. Thank you very much, Professor Kashiwagi. So there was explanation about the achievement of the laureates. Now we would like to move on to the questions and answer sessions. For those who have questions, please raise your hand. The staff will hand oh, the microphone to you, so please mention your name and your company, and please ask the question. Now, for those who have questions, please raise your hand. Thank you. From Kyoto newspaper, my name is Ashida. Question about achievement by Dr. Daiseros. Up to date, there has been the research for the function of brain, but what is the largest difference for the optogenetics by Dr. Dyseros compared with the one which has been done up to date. Thank you. In one word, in our brain, there are different types of nerve cells, but specific kind of nerve cells have the ensemble, and if that's activated or inhibited, then some specific functions of the brain can be executed and behavior can be changed. And that has been proven by Dr. Daiseros. That's the largest achievement by doctor. Sorry, this is still very abstract explanation. However, so far, we did the research for humans, and if human beings are doing some task, then some site in the brain is activated, usually observed frequently by fMRI, and all we can say is that we assume that perhaps that site of the brain is involved in that function. That means a function compared with the behavior, all we can say is a core relationship. That has been the research that we have done. However, from the achievement of Dr. Dyseros, inside the brain, for example, we have dopamine neuron, which uses dopamine as a neurotransmitter. That's one type of nerve cells, and that neurons can be activated specifically with the light-activated protein, then conditioning is now possible. That has been shown by Dr. Dyseros. Conditioning behavior can be done sufficiently by the specific neurons' activity. We have the sufficient condition used in mathematics as well. And that has been difficult to be proven, but for the very first time, because of the Dr. Dyseros, now it's possible today. Let me give you a more specific example. We have memories, short-term memory and long-term memory. 
For example, several years ago, we visited some place and we had a big trouble. And then that bitter memory is a long-term memory. But I am explaining right now and I am memorizing what I said. So that is a short-term memory. In the brain science, short-term memory can be converted to long-term memory. And the important role was played by the hippocampus. Memory is once stored in hippocampus, and that will be transferred to the cerebral cortex to become the long-term memory. That has been the understanding. Therefore, for the purpose of that long-term memory to be maintained, hippocampus was not necessary. That was the interpretation. And in robotomy, the patient called HM had the destruction of the hippocampus. That patient cannot make a new memory. However, prior to the robotomy, memory has remained in that patient. But if pharmacologically, if a hippocampus is destructed, then short-term memory cannot be converted to long-term. However, readout of the long-term memory is said to be possible. That has been the theory. However, Dr. Dyseros focused on the CA1 in the neuron of the hippocampus, and hololodopsin was used for silencing. And then, in fact, only short-term scale, two seconds only. Then, old memory cannot be read out. But pharmacologically, we could suppress for a long time for the hippocampus. And then, now it's reversed. Long-term memory can be read out. Very complex story. That means that there are many pathways connecting hippocampus cerebral cortex, and those pathways are collapsed for long term. And then our brain is flexible enough to make a complementary other pathways. Therefore, in order to do the research for the causal relationship, we had the physical lesion or pharmacological lesion. Those were used for the experiments. And then that effect can last for a long time. Then the brain as a whole can change itself. However, in optogenetics, we can have the time resolution of the millisec or several tens of seconds only. We can control the brain function with a short time only. Therefore, in the past, the theory was the hippocampus is not necessary for the long-term memory, but it is now denied. This type of discovery has been made one after another. Is that okay? Anybody else? I'm Kusaka from Nikkan Kogyo newspaper. Again, for Dr. Daiseros. That is my question. Because of this results of his research, what would happen to the disease or the trauma? Any effects given to those patients in the future? Yes. First of all, I would like to say that Dr. Carl Daiseros has MD, PhD as a degree. He is the basic researcher for the neuron systems. However, he is a psychiatrist as well. I heard that he's still seeing patients. Therefore, these technologies, not only for the science by itself, for the mental disease, developmental disorders, neurology disease, for treatment, he's very much motivated and he has a strong desire to help those people, Parkinson's disease, schizophrenia, or development disorder, especially autism included, and depression, mood disorder, those neuron circuit system has been investigated and many papers were published. Sorry to come into the specialty area, but for the Parkinsonism, treatment, there is a method called deep brain stimulation. But that can be replaced by the optogenetics. That's the possibility that he is challenging. And also for eyes, retina, some people have lost visual ability. Then channel rhodopsin can be inserted, 
and then the neuron can be fired for the recovery of the vision. I did not done by the doctor, but the other people are doing the cardiac heart muscle with the opto pacemaker. So many kinds of application has been tried. An R&D on short-term basis would be pursued, but including myself, what we expect to see is that for the psychiatric disease and development disorders, those are the disorders in the circuit system. In the conventional ways, it was very hard to understand what is happening in the drain. So diagnosis treatment is not yet advanced. But with the optogenetics for the psychiatric disease or the development of disorders, so what are the systems or the circuits involvement in those disease onset? And then definitive diagnosis or treatment will be emerging into the future. That's expectation. I also have a question for the arts and philosophy, Laurie Miss John Jonas. In the 1970s, she created uh, works by purchasing the video. So could you please explain to me what makes it revolutionary when we look at the same age? If we look at Japan, there were private films in from 1960s and 1970s in Japan, there were many private films created, and Warhol uh, is famous for using the Volex uh, film camera. He purchased a camera and made an image out of that. In his case, a famous works named Empire, which I have also seen. In this work, Empire, the camera is set stationary for eight hours. And so the audience need to look at the Empire State Buildings that the sun sets and gradually changes. So this is kind of an experimental kind of work. As for Warhol, it's not a pop art, but I believe it's part of the conceptual art. So this kind of expression was made. So from 1960 to 1970, there were more artists doing that kind of thing. But in the case of Ms. Jonas, by utilizing video, she filmed herself and also with uh, combining them in a different time with her own image and the current image. She uh, superimposed those different images. And also in the case of video, you can see that on a real-time basis. If it's a film camera, that will be difficult. Be so in the case of video, there is no time discrepancy because in the past for the films there is need time to develop and so on but for the video this has changed and by doing that in 1970s also in Japan there were many private videos being released in Japan for example even today the image forum is conducted and one of the films that were shown in image forum were being influenced by her work and also uh, artist Toshio Matsumoto is very famous and I think those are the artists that were influenced and began making the video arts. Did I answer your question? Thank you. Anybody else? I'm Hareno from NHK. Question for Professor Mori. Dr. Kashiwara developed the D modulus that made a big influence on the modern mathematics and forming the mainstream. That's what you said. But how large is that influence onto the modern mathematics? Could you give me the metaphor or the easier explanation to us? Let me see. I wonder whether I can explain it well. Well, algebraic analysis studied uh, Grotendieck et al. made the abstract form of methodology used in the algebraic geometry that had been applied to the analysis. That is a very big approach in its change. For example, derived category has been addressed in recent days. Therefore, newer concepts have been emerged. 
Dr. Kashiwara has been doing these new concepts. Therefore, various new movements has been made by himself with his own research, but in parallel, he is moving towards the future dimension of the modern mathematics. For example, slide 27, please. I showed this graph at the beginning. Algebraic analysis has been used for the number theory, representation theory, and the mathematical physics as well. So that is reflecting the influence of doctor's achievement. I'm not convincing enough, sorry. Anybody else? Gentlemen in the first row, please. I'm Fuyuki from Yomiuri newspaper, again to Professor Mori. Dr. Kashiwada's mathematical theory might be related with Professor Mori's work, whether that's the case or not. And I think you are friends, so therefore, what kind of mathematicians is he? Could you give us his impression? Well, very difficult question to answer. Well, in the mathematical fields, we are not related. We do not have the joint theme in doing our own research. But how should I say? It was touched upon in the explanation, Dr. Kashiwara is followed by many younger researchers because of his character, but also he has a good influence on the research. So he is a influential person. And I am attracted strongly to the character or personality of Dr. Kashiwara. Of course, this Kyoto Prize decision is not related to my personal preference. But what kind of person is he? Well, he's very strange. In the field of mathematics, many mathematicians are strange people, but um, let me explain how Dr. Kashiwara is. Dr. Kashiwara, I call him Kashiwara-san. Kashiwara-san, you are very unique, very strange. Do you have self-awareness? And he said, well, do you think so? But he doesn't get bothered. He didn't show any uncomfortableness. Good character, very good person. He will enter into this room later, so you will know, but although he might be tensed today. So that's the character of Dr. Kashiwara. So more stranger than the Professor Mori? Well, that depends on your judgment. You decide. I think I myself am um, ordinary person, but when I come home, I'm in the family, I'm a totally stranger. So, thank you very much. Thank you. That's the closing of the Q&A for the chairman of the Kyoto Prize Committee. And Dr. Kashiwara is here with us. So again, let us introduce the laureate for the basic science, Dr. Masaki Kashiwara. Thank you for coming to the press conference in spite of your busy schedule. We are very pleased to have the laureates in front of the press. We would like to have questions from the floor. First of all, I would like to ask Dr. Kashiwara to mention your feeling today. My name is Masaki Kashiwara. I was given the award of Kyoto Prize, and uh, there is much surprise about that. In this opportunity, well, I think looking back at the about 50 years of my research years, I feel that I have been very fortunate. 
First, I met Dr. Sato Mikio, and there I could learn what is a research in the field of mathematics, and I think that was a big achievement or the first step for my studies of mathematics. And after that, I also met Dr. Takahiro Kawai and also many others who had been leading myself. And so I believe that I was fortunate enough that had the very fortunate encounters. In the case of mathematics, normally the research is done just by oneself. In my case, however, compared to other mathematicians, I think I do have more joint research with other researchers. So I believe that I have been very fortunate to work with other mathematicians and not only just by myself, but having the other people's help, I believe that I could achieve many things thanks to those helps. Especially, I believe that I'm very much surprised that I was given, I'm given this Kyoto Prize. And it is thanks to all the help of others. Thank you very much, Dr. Kashiwara. Then we would like to have questions for Dr. Kashiwara. Please raise your hand, mention your name and your company before you ask your question. Please. My name is Hayashi from Yomiuri newspaper. You mentioned that you're surprised to be given this Kyoto Prize. How do you view this Kyoto Prize, how do you view these prizes? And also, I would like to know how, since you encountered Dr. Sato and learned from Dr. Sato as a mathematician, what kind of attitude did you learn from Dr. Sato? As for the Kyoto Prize, I believe that this prize is really reflecting the philosophy of Dr. Inamori And about Dr. Sato, I believe that for mathematics, it is important to create something new, it's very important. And I think that attitude is very important. And I think that was the greatest thing that I learned from Dr. Sato before that. For example, in high school, before I met Dr. Sato, I think about two years after graduating high school, until those days, when I think of mathematics, it was only learning about mathematics. But uh, what I learned from him is that not just learning, but it is important that we create something new. Any other questions? I'm Nonaka from Asahi newspaper. Related to the previous question, now that you're given the prize, did you talk with Dr. Sato about the, this prize? And when you moved from Tokyo University, when Dr. Sato moved from Tokyo University to Kyoto University, you moved together, so I believe you are the very favorite disciple of Dr. Sato. So again, I would like to know what are the influences and what is the existence for both? Well, today is a day to make official announcement about the Kyoto Prize. So I was not allowed to talk about this. So I have not talked with Dr. Sato yet. And just looking back, the time that I have been uh, moved to the research institute together with Dr. Sato, and we held the seminars and made collaborative studies together. 
And I believe that those days was a very condensed time, and this is something that is indispensable for me. And just looking back at those days, I think it lasted only about five years or less than five years, but still the time was so much condensed that、uh, I learned a lot from those times. Anybody else? I am Haruno from NHK. Sorry to ask a basic question. For Dr. Kashiwara, what is the attractiveness of the mathematics? What's fun about it? Well, all of a sudden, that question is asked. I got puzzled, but. I think perhaps the attractive element is that what I cannot understand is becoming all of a sudden things to be understood. Although that is very subjective, but that's the interesting part for me. A bit similar to quiz, but in mathematics, especially the theory, we can create those, we can build up those. But on that process, we want to identify which way to go for making success. But sometimes intuitively, we can know which way to go. That's the instantaneous moments which gives me the attractiveness, fulfilled achievement. That's how I answer. Sorry whether I answer your question or not. One more question, if I may. D modules w a s established from the beginning by Dr. Kashiwara. What's the contribution to the today's mathematics? Well, well, first of all, I have to explain it. D modules w a s identified originally by Dr. Sato. I think that's fair to say. I succeeded and then I gave flesh for further development into the future, but originally, The indication of the importance of the modulus was done by my senior, Dr. Sato. In the field of mathematics, we do not have one discovery or creation which will be applied as they are. Usually, different, the way of thinking can be applied in the mathematical field, not the thing that we discovered by themselves. And objects can change over time. Therefore, the, if we have one theory, then a similar one s will be applied. So, therefore, always that is the deviation. But skeleton can remain. For example, in the number theory, like integer theory, which handles numbers, in that subfield of mathematics, the modulus. Is being applied in the different ways from our application, and we can find other examples as well. For example, Fields Medal winner, a mathematician, Dr. d u r i n u very famous mathematician, about the same age. As mine, but many years ago, I think 30, 40 years ago, we had a conversation. I think 40 years ago, for the module, is that applicable to use the integer theory for the D module? That was the question asked. And at that time, I didn't understand how to answer. But I think he, in a way, Gave us the reply. But from the totally different perspective, similar 
things was approached by Dr. Durinu. Therefore, our findings might not be directly connected, but ideas, ways of thinking, approaches, those will be linked and carried over over the generation. That's the characteristics of the mathematics. So theorem or other discoveries are not directly connected to the future field. Anybody else? Sorry, I'm Ashida from Kyoto newspaper. In the achievements, you were explained that you had a lot of collaborative researches. But in order to do the collaborative researches, do you have any clues or the mindsets? And do you have idea that usually mathematicians are individual by themselves, by alone? However, because of your character of which elements you were fit with the collaborative research? Well, I think I do some individual work as well, and many mathematicians are doing the individual researches. But if we do it by ourselves alone, sometimes we end up with adhering to some things. Narrow-minded approach is the result. For example, I tend to concentrate intensively, and then no other things can be visible. Only the things that I can see is that object alone. But if we have the collaborative research, other people can give us the other perspectives. Of course, that's not always, but sometimes it happens. But I think that's the most critical element in collaboration. And one more thing is that often we hit the barriers we go into impasse, we have no idea what to do. In those cases of difficulties, collaborative research is very much supportive. Anybody else? My name is Fuyuki from Yomi Uri newspaper. Professor Modi said Dr. Kashiwara is very unique, or a strange person, and good character. That was the assessment given by Professor Mori. What is your self-assessment? And prize money this year is 100 million yen. Have you determined how to spend? Well, for the first question, well, I don't know about myself. That's the only thing that I can say. I don't think I'm strange at all. That's all I can say. And for prize money, sorry. I haven't thought about those. My brain cells is not yet reaching that thought at all. I have, truly speaking, no idea yet. Sorry. I am Katsumata from Chunichi newspaper. Theory of the D module was established in 1973. The other day I got that calendar year. Is that correct? Well, well, people could say so, but, well, I think much later, a little bit later, well, that depends on the definition of establishment, but Professor Mori explained about the Riemann Hilbert correspondence. I think that was closer to 1980. Therefore, establishing the D module, perhaps 1980. Which specific year? Well, I will not say I established, but I think at 1980 or around 1980 would be okay.
Dr. Sato indicated the importance of the module around when? 1960. In 1960, Dr. Sato gave his lecture. In his lecture, he identified the importance of the module. Thank you. Anybody else? I'm Suganuma from my niche newspaper. Congratulations, indeed. It's nothing to do with the prize salary, but since when you got interested in mathematics? And also, you gave the flesh to various theories, but what was the feeling, joy, pleasure? May I ask those? Well, when I got interested in the research of mathematics, well, I think quite later in my life, I think after I met Dr. Sato, and the feeling of joy in doing mathematics, the second question that you raised, well, perhaps the most joy comes when I find something new. For example, there are many, many pending problems. For example, for the suspended questions were resolved finally, and my junior, Mr. Miwa, was the close junior. In the middle of night, I found him because of joy that happened. You said a telephone call in the midnight. What did you say to him? How? Did it? I did it? Well, very close, yes. It's very close to that. Yes. Thank you very much. It's time to close the session. With this, we would like to close the press conference for the Kyoto Prize 2018.